Well, we're joined now by the Mail on Sunday columnist Peter Hitchens. Welcome to The Daily Politics. But first of all, Nick Clegg, you've just returned, I understand, from attending a UN summit in New York on drug reform. It was widely panned as being something of a damp squib. Were you very disappointed? Uh, I wasn't surprised. You, you've, got, you've got now such diverse opinion across the world. So you've got sort of nations like Russia, China, Asian countries who want to sort of chop people's hands off if they touch drugs. And then you've got this huge experiment, particularly in North and Latin America, towards decriminalisation mm. and or regulation, which are, by the way, separate. The, sure. the, the, the film slightly conflated the two. And so the world is now really quite polarised in its debate. In... So I say no, no wonder, therefore, that if you bring all those countries together, but they can't agree. But you accept that nothing really substantial was achieved? Not, not much was achieved there. What, what's happening, which is the, which is the interesting thing, is, is, is what's happening in, in countries uh, uh, across the world who are experimenting, are innovating, are trying to do something different to try and reduce the harm of drugs. And right. I think that's where, in a sense, the, that's where the debate is now. Not in the UN, it's more at national or even local level. Do you accept that because there are these polarised positions, as Nick Clegg has just outlined, it's very difficult then... To, to look at what some people would argue is the sensible view of decriminalising um, some drugs in order to reduce the number of people who are actually becoming addicted to hard, harder drugs. So almost everything you said uh, was factually wrong there. Uh, the problem with this debate is that it's conducted at a level of ignorance which is positively astonishing. The biggest decriminalisation experiment probably in the Western world has been conducted in this country since 1971 under the Misuse of Drugs Act. Cannabis has been effectively a decriminalised drug in this country for many years. The head of the flying squad, John O'Connor, said so in 1994. Lord Hailsham, that well-known hippie, instructed magistrates to stop sending people to prison for cannabis possession in 1973. The number of people actually arrested and prosecuted for cannabis possession has been dropping like a stone in the past few years. Before then, the police invented something without asking Parliament called the Cannabis Warning, which allowed them to let people off. Cannabis possession in this country has been decriminalised. What is now going on is a huge, very well-funded campaign, what I call billionaire big dope, uh, to, to achieve the next stage, which is legalisation, which will now allow the marketing, the selling on the internet, the advertising, the appearance in shops of this product, and huge profits to be made. Right. While well, at the same time, this is absolutely vital, the mental health risks right. well, that's the what I want to come are to. enormous. And, 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 and Nick Clegg's party has been very rightly concerned about mental health and the yes. way it's neglected. A huge contribution to mental illness in this country is made by the very drugs which he seeks to legalise. All right, well, let's, you know, taking the point that, in your view, Peter Hitchens, there has been a sort of de facto decriminalisation... It's not my view. The facts but, are all well, available. But the, 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 it's the view you've expressed. Book but hang on, to Mr. Clegg. let me get on to... Them. If you read it, you'll have to stop saying everything you say because everything you say... Is well, right. don't say you don't get any much, gifts. Don't challenge. say you don't get any gifts on this programme. Um, but in terms of the mental illness, because that, mm. that is the big worry for people, that actually um, you can argue for decriminalisation mm. and we will cite um, statistics from countries like Portugal mm. that have actually shown uh, you can then uh, remove the barriers to help addicts. Mm. But because of the nature of the skunk or the cannabis that mm. is now being dealt you are getting increasing mm. numbers of young people suffering from schizophrenia. Why is your party still pushing that sure. policy? So, let's, uh, I think, um, Peter, bless him, just on completely the wrong footing. I don't, don't think... Drug me, no, no. <laughs> okay. uh, that drugs are bad for you, right? Sure. They cause harm. I'm a dad. I don't want my kids hooked on drugs. You have to reduce the harm of drugs. What you can't do, which is Peter and others, is somehow sort of wish it away and somehow think you can sort of prohibit drugs out of existence. They've been in existence for thousands of years. They will always be with us. So as a society, if you want to have a grown-up debate about this, you have to ask yourself why the war on drugs and the prohibitionist approach has not worked and ask yourself, for instance, if you want to look at the evidence and the data, why is it that we've just had the highest rate of drug-related fatalities in this country, three and a half thousand people, drug-related deaths in 2014. Portugal, after decriminalisation, and by the way, they didn't do it for some hippie uh, instinct. They did it because originally they were worried about the link between drug addiction and HIV a contamination, a, a spread of HIV. They've had 22 drug-related fatalities. At some point, people like Peter have to accept that the war on drugs is not working. And if something's not working, I generally think you try and something try something and, else and Peter, which is working better. If you better. look on, at Peter, the cover of the Peter. book, you'll find it says the war we never fought. Right, there but has Peter, can been I just, can no I just war on drugs. You, if, I, no, no, Nick Clegg is asking for an adult argument. Yeah, but an I want to put the figures to you. 
you. He's Hang on. Straw man. Right, but I mean, let me put the, the figures to you in Portugal because huge. people are interested in evidence base yes, too. Indeed. And in That's Portugal, the, the number of deaths from street drug, drug overdoses five years after decriminalisation fell from 400 to 290. The number of new HIV infections from dirty needles fell from 2,000 to 400. In Washington state, the first year of legalisation raised a lot of money too that went into um, helping uh, drug addicts, but marijuana-related convictions fell by 81% after the first year year of decriminalisation. Well, there's a mix so, of figures there. Well, at, 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 but everything comes totally down from uh, decriminalisation and legalisation. Let concentrate on the subject that I know about and that we can influence, which is what's going on in this country, which is the, the covert uh, de jure, the covert de facto decriminalisation of cannabis in this country. You, you need to look at the figures on arrests. In the past five years alone, the number of arrests for cannabis has, uh, uh, possession has halved. The, the head of Bristol Police said earlier on this week that they weren't bothering to arrest people for cannabis. Will you please stop pretending the some kind of savage prohibitionary war. This country is involved in a huge decriminalisation experiment. All the things which you blame on prohibition are actually the result of this decriminalisation experiment about which you appear not to know, though the figures are all available. No. Some of them are right. well, by Nick you Nick in parliamentary questions asked by you, so you ought to know. But the, right. the, 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 if only people would actually discuss this, and I'm constantly told, let's discuss this factually. I wrote an entire book on this. It contains the details of how this happened. Mm. Why don't you pay any attention and why do you you say you're worried about your Hang on, Peter, you say, Peter, Peter we've run out of time and we need to let children. Nick Clegg You're worried answer. about your children. You should not be pleased with the way in which they're exposed now wholly to a completely unrestrained yeah. cannabis trade. So, so I think dreadful, hang on, hang on, hang on, Peter, Peter very hang dangerous on, let, let Nick Clegg answer. <laughs> so Peter, of course, is correct uh, when he's saying that there is sort of de facto decriminalisation well, going you. on. It, well, but it's, it's not well, a very... Well, I'm going to down and quote it. Hang on, it's not a very remarkable discovery. Everyone knows it. So in Durham... Well, they never say it, though. Well, <laughs> I can get a word in You've never said it before. You, uh, you Peter, said, you Peter said a couple Hitchens, of years ago, hang on a second. Thousands of people to let, were sent Peter to jail Hitchens, every year. You need to let Nick speak. This he is not a monologue. All the time. Peter Hitchens, let Nick Clegg speak. I have a minority Nick view Clegg on this point. Very, very you do yourself no favours with I'm this. I'm doing myself a big favour. Nick Clegg. Yeah, no, all, right. so I, I, all I'm pointing out to Peter is his, his views are, are not actually particularly remarkable. Of course there is de, de facto decriminalisation mm. going on. The Chief Constable in Durham has made it quite clear that his, his uh, police officers are not going to arrest people for the personal possession of cannabis. So actually on that narrow point I agree with Peter. Let's have a bit of honesty that decriminalisation is happening de facto. That's why in government I always said let's just why do, not do what's happening. Right. But the, the, what, what Peter doesn't uh, address is that you have this sort of legal twilight world where it's sort of happening in practice but it's not recognised in law. At the same time it's the criminal gangs who nonetheless continue you to profit from it all and my question is what to what to what uh, at what point uh, is is uh, criminality mass criminality the answer to the to, to drugs and the harm they do to individuals I've never understood why anyone thinks that letting criminals run this industry is the best way to protect youngsters because they have no interest in protecting our youngsters whatsoever so let's right, so, so let cynical businessmen write as well as they ran the no, big, no, big no, tobacco Peter Hitchens, on that note no. thank you